Hey, everybody. So this research paper is called The Latent Space Hypothesis Towards Universal Medical Representation Learning, and it has a publication date of June 4th, 2025, although it's on Archive, published on Archive today. The unique and interesting thing about this research paper is, is like, uh, if this person hasn't followed my research, watched my videos, done something in some way uh, related to my research into these things, I would be absolutely shocked. Like I would be like beyond shocked because they they uh, lay it out exactly as I've been laying it out to you for two years now. Uh, and then so it's interesting overall, right? And I've had people hit me up saying that they've utilized it very specifically for these <laughs> types of medical use cases, which is why I made like the Zyra models, et cetera. Like I think I've tested the Zyra models myself on medical use cases and I've had people reach out to me independently uh, with regards towards their medical use cases of the Zyra model. So I have all of my research around all of this well documented in advance and I've open source and I've MIT licensed all of my research around this overall. So just stating that, making sure that that's 100% clear. I did that about a year or so ago. And so this particular research paper, just looking at the abstract, right? I mean, it's literally what I've been saying here. So <laughs> medical data range from genomic sequences and retinal photographs to structured laboratory results and unstructured clinical narratives. All of these modalities appear disparate. Many encode convergent information about a single underlying physiological state. The latent space hypothesis frames each observation as a projection of a unified, hierarchically organized manifold, much like shadows cast by the same three-dimensional object. Within this learned geometric representation, an individual's health status occupies a point. Disease progression traces a trajectory, and therapeutic intervention corresponds to directed vector. Interpreting heterogeneous evidence in a shared space provides a principled way to re-examine eponymous conditions such as Parkinson's or Crohn's that often mask pathophysiological uh, uh, entities and involve broader anatomical domains that once believed. Uh, so essentially, going into the research paper, it's the, the bottom line is, is that so they represent it by latent space, manifolds, and representations, right? And then you have an encoder that reads these representations. They get tokenized by cross models. Uh, and then they do they utilize federated learning for this process in order to learn all of these spaces. But so their argument overall is that the model learns the latent space. When it's training on it, it doesn't learn from the data set, it doesn't learn from the disease research, et cetera. That essentially what happens is, is that a mathematical latent space gets created uh, with, and then from that it becomes a geometrical latent space, which is 100% how the model treats it, right? The model treats it like a, uh, a geometrical space. And then so within that it, it plots and then it, it graphs within that space and then it travels uh, that latent space and then that, that manifold that is created via that latent space and then it uh, travels it uh, and it searches the representation of that space essentially. Uh, and then that's what the encoder does. <laughs> and then that's essentially uh, how it works. So to quote William Shakespeare from Hamlet, there are more things in heaven and earth, Horatio, than are dreamt of in your philosophy. <laughs> and so kind of like the underarching uh, principle behind this to me is when it, you break it down is like it's all like the um, uh, Essentially, what you're dealing with is like the the um, uh, platonic form of a uh, of a data set is what the models learn off of and and kind of how it works, right? They live kind of in platonic form land, <laughs> this latent space land, uh, which creates manifolds. And then so there's um, uh, I wouldn't agree with this researcher and this research paper 100% within that, right? What is not proven within this research, and and I would actually question them on and and slam them on with, within this is that uh, unique distinction that that it is a, a manifold that is created and that the that that's a manifold that the the uh, model is operating off of, right? Latent space. I agree with this. The mathematical foundation of biological encoding that you can do this, right? That you can you can uh, encode uh, like a genome genomics and et cetera. I've done a lot of this on my channel through like throughout the last two years as well. And then so uh, the optimization balance, what makes medical latent spaces special, reconstruction, discrimination, prediction, and smoothness. 
power of geometric understanding. I mean, this is exactly what I lay out to you. Latent spaces in the manifold hypothesis and medicine. Uh, and then so they break out that a latent space is a learned representation where each point corresponds to a complete observation. I, I grant that. Uh, and then so the power of this approach rests on the manifold hypothesis. It doesn't. <laughs> the proposition that high dimensional biological data actually lies on or near lower dimensional surfaces, manifolds embedded within the ambient measurement space. So. Uh, this is uh, in, in, incorrect. Like uh, this is a, a um, incorrect uh, reading and, and understanding of this. This statement cannot be proven. Like th th this author cannot do it. They don't have a mathematical equation uh, within that, that that proves this. Right. That's just their their um, opinion and assumption. So if I'm to knock this their their research within this, uh, they're not they're they're a step <laughs> behind within this. Like I mean, to me, it's it's very blatant that they're like. Um, getting this hypothesis from somewhere, right? Because they don't understand the, the hypothesis fully enough to understand this concept very specifically, uh, which is that uh, uh, like, uh, like a lot of people think that it rests on the manifold hypothesis, but it hasn't like, uh, you, you don't need a uh, manifold to operate within a, the, the geometric spaces that are laid out. Um, you can solve it uh, flat out via, via resonance. <laughs> and, and then that's kind of the, the bottom line, right? Um, and I think that, and the uh, hypothesis, and there's a, a group of people like, so there's, I'd say, and I put it at maybe at this point in time, let's call it between 500 and 1000 people that around the world and, and in the world that could speak deeply on some level around this concept enough to like understand, write this research paper, talk about this research paper, et cetera, right? And what this particular individual did here and what I'm doing here. And then so I think half of those people are split overall um, as to uh, whether or not this is actually true or not. And then so the fact that they're just putting spitting this out as true is uh, like, uh, <laughs> I think that they're not, not doing their job uh, well within that. I think they're, they're regurgitating slide out is my honest opinion within that. But so uh, within this, then we go down multi-scale integration from molecules to organisms. Sure, this is like, a, this has gone through a lot, right? Um, uh, and then they also talk about, uh, I think it, it, like, uh, it is good that they talk about here, multi-scale uh, latent spaces, why one size doesn't fit all, uh, and then like why um, latent spaces are, are individual and, and different, right? Like in, in, in a, the latent space for model A and for input B and for all of the calculations C that go into it are going to be different than model D, all of the calculations that go into it, the D, E, F, right? A, B, C is going to be different than D, E, F, like flat out, like they will not be the same, <laughs> not congruent, like, and then that's just kind of how it works. And then so, uh, let's see here. Um, And then again, like this is where they their their uh, lack of understanding within this. Like they, they don't have a method, like they, a true method and understanding for for how you get from uh, when manifolds become rich geometries, right? They can't prove any of this out, and then they don't. They talk about uh, phase transitions within diseases, et cetera. But so then, like uh, the bottom line, when you're talking about like this particular subject here, how how you get to this resonance actually speaks better to this overall. And then so like uh, I think that. Uh, they could do more work within that. Like, and, and so, uh, I mean, this research paper, I, I'm pointing it out because it's interesting and, and it, like, it flat out is uh, in alignment with like everything that I, I tell you about on this channel for two years, but there could be like a lot of more mathematical rigor within this research paper overall, right? It's, uh, they, they give you a lot of, of, of nice graphs, uh, et cetera, overall and, and the biological, but then the mathematical framework, partial projections and shared manifolds, I do something here. Uh, I, I I read through this, but so like I'm just gonna like I I have no idea what um the model is gonna say about this, right? I have my opinion off of reading this overall, but I like to do this, so let's do it real quick. Why not, right?
So I'm not the author of this mathematical equation. Please give your unbiased opinion about its structure, formulation, and validity. I put that in there because it like oftentimes it'll try to catch it for you. So uh, this is a well-structured and conceptually sound mathematical framework for explaining cross-modal transfer learning, particularly in the medical context. It uses clear analogies and standard machine learning concepts to effectively communicate both the potential and the limitations of integrating data from different sources. Formulation is logical and its conclusions are valid with the described context structure. The structure of the explanation is excellent. It begins with a high level intuitive analogy, the high dimensional sculpture of a patient's biological state to ground the reader. It then progressively introduces more specific concepts, moving from the general idea of measurement as projection to the more formal mathematical representations. The use of analogies such as the 3D sculpture and its 2D shadow is particularly effective. It makes the abstract and challenging concept of non-invertible functions accessible to a non-expert audience, etc. Yeah, that's true. Um, formulation, the formulation is the equation, late in space decomposition, optimization objective. Uh, framework's reasoning is valid and leads to sound conclusions. The central argument that cross-modal transfer is possible but inherently imperfect is well supported by the mathematical uh, setup. Yeah, that's, that's all true, right? Uh, so the explanation uh, correctly identifies the two primary reasons for imperfect transfer, information loss, and modality uniqueness. At the same time, it correctly identifies the reason why transfer learning is possible at all. Different modalities are views of the same underlying system, and the shared latent space is designed to capture the common signals that manifest across uh, blah blah blah. But so the point, like being like, none of this speaks to the manifold hypothesis or the manifold equation, right? All of this, <laughs> I agree with all of this and, and everything that it says, and this whole entire um, statement and the reasoning behind it, right? But none of it proves out that uh, manifolds are specific to this equation. It's all specific and backs up latent spaces and, and the latent space the decomposition and, and like um, shadow. I, I like those types of concepts as well, like. Uh, shadows versus the the, the actual like uh, real predictions right like the the, the or real projections like a, like our projections versus like the the actual experience like uh, it's very to me very platonic overall <laughs> like uh, with regards towards the the structure of these things but it's I think it's very important and, and, and imperative to point out that like none of this proves manifold hypothesis overall like there's a like uh i get into these like there's again there's very few people that understand these concepts but like um it's very important to point out that like uh one doesn't lead to the other <laughs> they're not directly connected um so yes i i i support that the latent space exists it's a, it, it is latent space uh etc i am not uh, positive, and I've seen a lot of evidence refuting, and I've gone over a lot of evidence on this channel and multiple papers, uh, the manifold hypothesis connected to the latent space hypothesis. And then, so just pointing that out overall to like, um, that's where I'm at with this. I mean, people can take it. <laughs> this is all like, um, 100% like cutting edge brand, like, like, uh, this is all, I mean, like as far, like as cutting edge as you can get within like what the current uh, hypotheses are with regards towards physics, AI, et cetera, right? So I'll leave it up to uh, people to make their own opinions, assumptions, et cetera. Uh, but to me, like it's important to, to point out like what is and what is not like actual proven, like as, as like this is part of the theorem or connected to the theorem. And like uh, within the manifold hypothesis, it's not proven to directly be connected to the life and space hypothesis. And there's a lot of evidence that points that they're not directly correlated. Uh, and the mathematical structure within this paper, while valid within what it does and what it points out with regards towards representations of the latent space, doesn't do anything to prove that manifold hypothesis overall. And so that's kind of overall what I want to point into, point out, get into within this, like overall, I mean, the <laughs> bottom line that I'll, I'll state within this is that like, uh, I think that this is interesting research overall. I'm glad that people are starting to, uh, understand that this is the way, right? Like, uh, if, if, uh, I'm correct with these things, there'd be more and more research coming out about it. So here you are. Uh, and then, so, so uh, and, uh, it's all more and more medical, uh, research, uh, like, uh, kind of like the most groundbreaking research that you could possibly think of. Uh, so like, uh, 
I don't know. Pretty cool. Um, not gonna say I told you so, <laughs> but uh, I've been spouting, spouting and saying these things for two years now. Overall, uh, exactly this argument. I had so many haters of this argument when I first started saying it. Right when it was just me, uh, and then but now here it is, paper after paper after paper. Literally every single day for the last like two months now. I think you could literally pick any uh, like pick any day. Yeah, I guarantee you, you'll find almost guarantee you <laughs> you will find a, at least least one article uh, related to like all of this overall if you sift through them and you look like it's I mean here it is uh, the latent space hypothesis I'll leave a link to this research paper if you like this type of content please like subscribe thank you very much